Hello, my name is Leon Shulak, and I have the honor of serving as the principal at Creepy High School in Carrollton Farmers Branch. Creepy High School is one of five high schools in the district which has approximately 1,700 students. We have two traditional feeder middle schools in our district, however, we are an open enrollment district and students are able to choose high schools based on academies or programs of study. Creepy High School also has a variety of CTE programs of study and academies. Law, Criminal Justice Academy, Academy of Future Teachers, Cybersecurity, Emergency Services, Law Enforcement, Family and Community Services, Health and Wellness, Auto Technology, Diesel and Heavy Equipment, and Yearbook. Through these various pathways, there are 33 possible certifications and more will be rolling out in the future. In 2022-23 school year, CTE students at Creepy High School earned 244 certifications and 353 certifications total over the last three years. Creepy High School's motto is, offer the best, expect the best, and be the best. And we align everything we do in our thinking with that. Creepy High School's AVID program started in 2007 with 19 students, one elective teacher, and six site team members. We now have 209 students, five elective teachers, and 33 site members who comprised of administrators, counselors, and teachers on the campus. My journey with Creepy AVID began back in 2010 when I was in college and also serving as an AVID tutor at Creepy High School. I then became certified and was hired as an AVID elective teacher who, and then became an AVID coordinator here at Creepy. You. We are excited to have you on our campus to see all the great things here at Creepy High School and also how AVID has permeated through everything we do on our campus, not just in the elective classrooms, but in every classroom in the building. Welcome to Creepy High School. Johnson. I'm the AVID coordinator here at Creekview High School. This is my 17th year teaching at Creekview. Um, I've been teaching AVID for 15 years and have been the coordinator for seven years. Uh, we started AVID at Creekview in 2007, so I was a first year teacher at CHS when AVID was implemented. It started with just one section of 14 ninth graders um, and a site team of six. 17 years later, we are a site team of 33 teachers, five elective teachers, and over 200 students. Our AVID students make up more than 10% of our Creekview student population. Some of the campus systems that I'm really proud that we've created at Creekview have a lot to do with breaking down barriers for our students and creating opportunities, not just for our students, but for our staff. Um, we celebrate that Creekview has the highest teacher retention of most of our district, but definitely out of our high schools um, specifically since the pandemic. Part of that is because of the support system that we have for our new teachers that uh, start or begin teaching at CHS. We have six instructional facilitators that help support our teachers who are new to Creekview. Four of those IFs are on our Creekview AVID site team. So they have all been to AVID Summer Institute and are pivotal in the wicker work that we've done here at CHS. And three of those IFs either currently teach the AVID elective or have taught it at Creekview before. So everything that they do to help advocate for um, their new teachers is embedded in the work that we've done in AVID. Continuing with that, since the pandemic, we have really rooted everything we do in the AVID framework. So we, everything, if it, that doesn't connect to student relationships or increasing rigor in our classrooms, we don't do it, um, which is pivotal in the CMR framework that AVID uses. I always use our framework about advocating for students, insisting on rigor, creating opportunities, um, breaking down barriers. If it doesn't connect to one of those, I never introduce it to our staff in connection to AVID. Um, so two of the things that we have really focused on since we came back from the pandemic, the first one was academic language scripts and word banks. I trained the entire staff on how to implement these to get students back into talking and writing and um, whether that is to build relationships with one another or to increase the academic rigor in classes. We rolled that out through our advisory classes. So last year, we were a part of the AVID advisory pilot. So we used 
every Avid Advisory lesson that was um, online and through those modules in our advisory classes. Every three weeks, I received feedback from students and from teachers about how they felt their engagement increased or how effective those lessons were. And then I used that feedback to respond to the pilot lessons, but then also used it to help maintain the culture that we wanted to set in our advisory classes. We spend the first four weeks of advisory at the beginning of the school year just building relational capacity and that's going to look different at different grade levels uh, depending on if a advisory teacher is brand new with ninth graders or if they've been sitting in that room for three years with them as 12th graders so after we build that relational capacity then we start building in some of the cores of avid focus note taking planners and organization whether that's digital organization or physical organization um, and empowering students to advocate for themselves and to have their voice by the time they leave Creekview is essential for all teachers at Creekview. Um, we love that they come back and they need us afterwards, but we don't want them to have to need us. I always, we talk with the staff and we talk in our AVID classes that when you leave Creekview, you are an advocate for yourself. And when we hear from you, it's to celebrate or to help um, with any new ventures in your life. But we want to make sure that your voice is yours and that when you are either at college or post or in your post-secondary career, that you're able, that our students feel empowered to use their voice um, and to be advocates for one another and for themselves. So another celebration through advisory that uh, we have found is our college bound culture. Uh, last year at the end of the school year, we had our staff and students just take a reflective survey about advisory and just about how their school year had been going. We had 98.4% of our Creekview staff um, show that they believe that their students can get to and through a two or four year college, uh, which post pandemic we thought was a huge celebration that that was even beyond 90%, but 98.4% was a huge celebration. And 90% of our Creepy students believe that their teachers believe that they're college ready. So we know that that community and that aspect of helping one another is strong here at CHS. Uh, we have many organizations beyond the AVID elective that also take students on college and career uh, field trips and opportunities and experiences. For instance, our uh, varsity athletics, a lot of times they do their best to take students to not just athlete games, but also college campuses. So for instance, last year we had our varsity basketball team went to Texas A&M Commerce. Uh, they watched and were spectators at a uh, AM Commerce basketball game, but also were able to take a tour of the campus, the locker room, and talk to other student athletes about their, stu their college athletic experience. We also have student or er, organizations such as our Black Student Union or our DECA. Uh, students who go get to go onto college campuses or get to do community service projects whether that is through feeding our own our metrocrest services um, or going to local campuses to visit another system that we have worked to refine on our campus since the pandemic is our ongoing instructional support for our teachers um, and making sure that our avid methodology and professional philosophy is the framework for everything that we do. So 56% um, of our staff has either attended Summer Institute um, or have sat through APLM trainings with me or our AVID instructional coach. We provide monthly PD opportunities. This year we have focused a lot on collaborative structures based on the walkthroughs that we have done as a campus. We noticed that students were still hesitant to speak, um, to communicate with one another. They really were comfortable in their individual learning uh, environment. And so to create more of that collaborative uh, culture at CHS, that has been a huge push of that we have done this semester. We did intentional collaborative structure planning through our professional development periods um, where teachers looked through our AVID observation form and they picked a collaborative structure that they felt they could 
intentionally plan with fidelity and then two weeks later we came back to our PDs to reflect on that process um, and then teachers were either able to plan a next intentional structure or make tweaks to the one they did in order to do it more effectively next time. We also monthly uh, we celebrate our teachers for the wicker work and the planner work that they are doing in their classes. A lot of those celebrations come from our classroom observation form but recently we've been asking students about which teachers they want to celebrate. How are are they seeing uh, wicker being used? Are their teachers effectively using their planners? Are there note taking things that are happening? And then at our site, or our, and then at our faculty meetings, we celebrate those teachers. They get an avid cup with a college pendant, some college swag um, to celebrate them and to also continue promoting that college going culture in their classrooms. Another AVID elective system that we're incredibly proud of here at Creekview is our AVID ambassadors. So we asked last year, um, the point of the AVID ambassador was to help be set a, found, a leadership foundation on our campus for AVID, but to also help supplement in the tutorial process. So we had students apply to be AVID ambassadors. Uh, they were trained on the tutorial process, so if we were short tutors um, or needed some extra support, that they were able to step in as peer tutors. But then we also trained them on how to be an advocate and how to be an ambassador. They have taken that and completely flown with it and have owned that process. Process. Uh, they are in charge of our middle school recruitment um, and role models. They go to our middle schools to talk on panels, to lead team building activities. Um, anytime we host an outside organization, they are the first that our campus goes to to ask for help, whether that is to be a student voice um, or it is to just walk around and show uh, our visitors what Creekview has to offer. Last year we had 12 ambassadors. This year we had over 50 students apply um, and we had to cut it down to 32 ambassadors. So we have 32 student ambassadors from grades 9 through 12 that um, have that leadership role on our campus. Most of those students are also involved in various extracurricular clubs and organizations whether it's athletics, fine arts, DECA, um, or a part of our academies or programs of study. My name is Joy and I'm a senior. I've been an AVID since 10th grade. Um, my name is Tayana. I'm a senior and I've been an AVID since 7th grade. My name is Nathan. I've, I'm a sophomore and I've been an AVID since my 7th grade year. So AVID has helped me outside of class definitely getting involved with my community. Um, I haven't been in CFB my whole life, so by being an AVID, it gave me a community to start a foundation with to connect with others. One thing I learned from AVID is learning how to advocate for myself. I learned how to communicate with teachers and managers from work, and I think AVID just helped me be comfortable with asking for help. I've learned organization, which is a huge factor in my daily life. I use that for simple task as just planning out my day. And um, planning is <laughs> um, another one that I use for all my classes and that's how I get through my day. And um, I, I jot down the assignments that I've got to do and then I jot down every, every little thing that I've got to do such as my driver's ed. Um, I just break down my time using my planner. So my most proud AVID accomplishment is getting accepted to TWU and UT, which are colleges that I've wanted to go to. And I also got a $5,000 scholarship from TWU. I think my most proud AVID accomplishment is being able to become an AVID ambassador. I love to do, I love to be more involved with my community, especially being an AVID ambassador. I love the AVID program. It helps me stay organized, just helps the best parts of me and I want to go to college and it's guided me there. My most proud AVID accomplishment is definitely getting into both of the colleges that I applied for. Um, I was just really proud of myself and I feel like I've come a long way. My non-AVID friends have benefited from Creekview by learning about like financial aid night that um, AVID helps out and like me helping them use AVID strategies in their classes. 
They benefit from AVID, um, even though they're not in it, just because I'm able to help them with tutorials and stuff like that. Um, whenever they have questions, I'm able to guide them to the answer without just straight up like telling them the answer. AVID has helped my, my friends outside of the class by keeping them organized. And then it has also helped them by um, just taking our notes. We use Cornell notes all the time, and that really helps us break down our um, our classes and our questions. It helps us just take uh, take critical notes. There you go. My favorite part about AVID is definitely the college application process. Um, by being an AVID, it makes it so much easier. It gave me like a pathway definitely to get to where I wanted to go. This is my TRFs. I love tutorials because I love to, to find something. And I love the community whenever we all come together and just help each other solve um, questions and guide each other. And I think it, it really affects my, my, my grades. Whenever I go into, I usually write about algebra and it brought up my grade by 20 points. So it's really helped me. My favorite part of AVID is getting time to do college applications and learning to do like scholarships. AVID has definitely challenged me in making my notes a lot better. I feel like I go back and look at them a lot more than I would if I wasn't in AVID. So one of the things that we're incredibly proud of here at Creekview is also our academies and our programs of study. We at Creekview consider ourselves the helping people people. So all of our academies and programs of study deal with service. We have two academies. That is the Academy of Future Teachers and the Law and Criminal Justice Academy. We are also in the process of getting a fire and EMT academy. And we also have our district's ROTC on our campus. Um, our programs of study are from everything to law enforcement, family and community services, health and wellness, auto tech, diesel and heavy equipment. Um, through these various pathways, there are more than 30 possible certifications that students can get by the time they graduate. Um, last year, specifically, we had students earn 244 certifications, um, whether that was through auto tech to become teacher aides um, or even just to work through our cybersecurity. Although the systems that we've built at Creekview we know are strong, we also know that there's always room for improvement. So like many AVID systems across the nation, we're continuing to work on uh, recruiting and retaining our male students in the AVID elective. Um, we've seen this pendulum shift in all kinds of ways, but especially since the pandemic of having um, more students at the ninth and male students at the ninth and 10th grade. Um, and then for various reasons, losing them to other organizations um, or to programs of study academies. So one of the main things that we try to do is work with our coaches and with the elective uh, or with the athletic departments to create a bridge to ensure that even whether they stay in the elective or not, they're still getting the support systems of AVID, but ha also having the relationship with the coaches for them to encourage them to do both. So sometimes that looks like where the coaches may not have them in both periods for athletics. Um, they may just have them in one so that that student still has room for the AVID elective in their schedule. Uh, we work on recruitment by taking our own student athletes to the ninth and 10th grade uh, athletic periods to talk to them about the benefits of AVID, if they want to be a college athlete, how AVID can help support them, or whether or not they don't plan on being a college athlete, how this can actually help prepare them for their future. We um, also, this last school year, started our school-wide planner system. We are still approaching school-wide in that planner system and we'll continue doing that work. Um, our ninth grade teachers have truly bought in to the system and so we are hoping that that momentum will continue and we can continue to roll in that uh, planner and time management organization. We've seen a huge increase in not only student buy-in but teacher buy-in as well. Uh, teachers who are implementing it are noticing they're not being asked about when tests are, what if it's an A day or a B day or any other um, of the questions that we usually get asked without a planner. So they're huge advocates of within their departments of having teachers utilize them as well. 
Another focus is to continue working on our focus note taking. With over 150 teachers, it's really hard to find a solid system for all teachers, all content areas, whether that is in a core class, whether it's through one of the CTE classes, fine arts. So we are continuing to refine that system here at Creekview. Uh, a lot of our work moving forward now that we have the collaborative structures, the academic word, our academic language scripts and word banks that we are hoping that can infiltrate itself into are also continuing to build and strengthen our focus note-taking system here at Creekview. My name is Ray Kane and I've been teaching AVIDS for the last seven years and I sponsor Student Council, Community Service Club, Black Student Union, Gender Sexualities Alliance, and I always forget one, Step and Stangs. <laughs> I am really proud of our students and their ability to develop our campus culture is a it's a culture of servant leadership and our students strive to help others every day we've got students that are involved in all of the student exec leadership organizations as well as student council um, community service club um, Chevals Poclorico it just happens to be that our AVID students are also the students that are leading these various organizations since the pandemic um, our teachers have strived to to increase the level of rigor in our classes and one way we do that is by implementing wicker by ensuring that we're meeting the needs of our students development of skills um, so our teachers work together and collaboratively so that we can develop more meaningful and more rigorous lessons that will allow our students to develop their skills and strengthen their skills through wicker one of the wicker strategies that we have pushed through our campus is uh, collaborative structures I'm really proud to hear about my students bragging about their Socratic seminar or their philosophical chairs or their team huddle that they got to collaborate on uh, in their various classes whether that be geometry or uh, world geography English even in dance these students are collaborating together um, to strengthen their understanding of a skill or a concept and they're also developing their their speaking skills and their listening skills as well one benefit that I love about the Wicker walkthroughs is getting to observe various classes and structures that I am personally unfamiliar with. I've never personally taken physics, but getting to walk in to a physics class and just observe how students are collaborating in that class, how students are practicing their writing skills and their speaking skills is really meaningful for me because then it helps me develop an understanding of how I can take that and apply it into my class in a different way than what we've previously done. I am extremely proud of Creekview AVID because of the various drives that we host throughout the year. We have multiple drives in the fall and in the spring semesters that are designed to help the communities in need. Uh, we've got our Creekview Cares drive, our toy drive, we did a shoe drive last year that was benefiting uh, local community um, animal shelters and um, we do drives for food, hygiene items, um, pretty much whenever there's a need in our community we partner with MetroCrest and we make sure that we can provide a drive on our campus so that students can continue to give back. My name is Dana Macedo. I'm the associate principal at Creekview High School. This is my eighth year at Creekview and it's my 26th year in the district. We really emphasize the importance of students taking advanced classes here and Creekview was given the silver recognition for the AP Honor Roll through College Board. Um, we received a gold in promoting a college going culture because of the number of students we have who take AP exams. We got a silver due to the number of students students who receive college credit and we were even ranked platinum due to college optimization for the number of students that we have who take five or more AP exams during their time here at high school. And especially exciting is that we were also given the AP Access Award which is given to students who the number of students who take AP exams either meets or exceeds the school population for underrepresented minorities or students who are economically disadvantaged. 
So when we planned our master schedule this year, we placed a heavy emphasis on the opportunity for all teachers in the building to have PLC time with a light course planning partner, somebody in their department, their full department, or a small team of teachers. And during that time, the main focus is planning high quality tier one instruction using the four PLC questions of what do we want students to know? How will we know when they have learned it? What will we do when they have learned it? And what will we do if they haven't learned it? One of the activities we do during our PLC time is once a month we do Watch Wednesdays where teachers take the observation form that we have designed, that the AVID site team designed, where they go to classrooms and look for examples of wicker in classrooms as well as physical representations of a college going culture and examples of rigorous instruction. So all teachers are looking for these things when they go to other classrooms and they leave teachers positive feedback when they go but it also gets everybody thinking about those things when they are in classrooms. From that, the site team will take a look at the data that was collected and that helps the site team determine where is a good campus-wide focus. Last semester, we saw that there were several classrooms that could have used more collaboration and more student talk. And so that was our focus for our next round of PLC sessions for our teachers was a session on collaborate, collaborative structures. and. Our AVID site team members went to their departments and they presented a just a short little PD session about planning collaborative structure, structures in their classroom. Teachers had time to plan an activity and then we came back a few weeks later where they were able to debrief and reflect over how that went. My favorite thing about AVID is the way it has shaped the culture in our building. I love the sense of family, the culture of fun that we develop and cultivate in our classes. The, the community makes Creepy AVID special. It allows me to connect with people that have similar experiences and similar goals, like we all want to go to college. My favorite part about AVID is definitely the college application process. Um, by being an AVID, it makes it so much easier. It gave me like a pathway definitely to get to where I wanted to go. It is beyond just the students in the classroom. It is the whole site team. It is teachers who are not involved in any direct way in AVID. It's the students. It is just a culture of a culture of high expectations, a culture of growth, and our students strive to help each other and they also are developing their own interpersonal and communication skills and I love seeing them mature and grow into themselves and become better people as a result. I think Creekfield Abbott is special because we're a big family and we celebrate each other's like accomplishments and we help each other through hard times. The growth that we see in our AVID students from freshman year to senior year is tremendous and there's no better example to the rest of the staff of the power that the AVID system has in, in enhancing our students' educational experience here.